My name is Aaron Smith, and I wanted to share some of my story with you. Um, I'm a pastor. Uh, I'm married to a beautiful wife. Uh, she loves me, even though I'm an idiot sometimes. Um, but my life is very different now than it was a couple of years ago, and, and I want to kind of share some of that journey with you. Um, so backtracked October 7th 2014 I had a sinus infection and uh, went to the doctor and um, I remember I've always been a heavy guy uh, always my I was very active growing up but um, the the pounds just kept adding up and as a big person and what you'll know is that if you're a if you're a person who struggles with weight you will do anything to avoid scales and truth is most doctor's offices um, stopped being able to weigh me after about 100 350 pounds and so it had been years since I had had an actual weight. And so um, I remember sitting in the doctor's office. They had had a new scale, and they sat me on it. I just assumed it overloaded because that's what always happened. Um, Dr. Breslin, my primary care, walked in and was like, um, Hey, Mr. Smith, how you doing? I was like, I'm doing fine. and just have a sinus infection trying to get it cleared up. And um, I remember him sitting down in his chair and going, Well, that's true. We'll, we'll we'll get to that at the end. It said, you know, we need to talk about your weight, and I'm like, okay. And I was like, well, let's 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 have that discussion. And he goes, well, do you know how much you weigh? And I was like, honestly, no. And he's like, well, uh, today you weighed in at 518 pounds. And I remember like being punched in the face or kicked in the groin or whatever whatever it was. I remember being shocked and thinking, is that possible? And um, truly being, for the next 10 minutes, I'm not sure what he said, but uh, yeah, I don't remember any of it. But I remember suddenly being snapped out of it when he said, um, well, Mr. Smith, um, I have a consideration for you. And that question is, is considering surgery. And I was like, um, we had met a couple of years prior and he was like, well, that's a consideration for helping with weight loss. But um, he said at the time, he was like, no, I'm not really into that. And so... What's crazy is that uh, I suddenly had this thought of, could I have surgery? I hate going to the doctor. I really do. And uh, I remember leaving that office being very um, scared because uh, I had no idea what to think. And I, I remember beating myself up over the fact that I weighed 518 pounds. And I was like, I'm a complete failure um, because I shouldn't be there. I shouldn't be here. And um, the truth is, I spent that week um, not long. So that was on a uh, that was on a Monday, I think. But on October tenth, I had scheduled an appointment with the weight loss center at Good Sam, uh, having no idea what that meant, and uh, go to that appointment. Well, I remember walking in just being completely scared that they were going to tell me that I'm a I'm a lost cause. I'm not sure why I would have thought that, but so I walked in and uh, met with Dr. Kalaki, and he. Uh, sat down and was very straight with me and said, you know, you, you're 518 pounds. He's like, that's dangerous. And he said, you know, people die um, having these kind of surgeries from in that weight range because of how, how stressful your body, how stressed your body is to the process. And I remember thinking, why is he telling me this? And I, I remember going, it's not exactly the best way to get somebody to have surgery with you, but I think it was the right way to speak to me because I needed to hear that this was not something to be taken lightly. Um, he ended up telling me, he was like, well, you've got 300 pounds of excess body weight you've got to get rid of. And um, he said, really the safest way is for you to have a sleeve gastrectomy, the gastric sleeve, and then after you've lost, you'll only lose about 50% of your body weight and said, you know, well, after that you can have the gastric bypass and you'll lose a good bit of the rest, but said it's going to be a rough road ahead. And so... I walked out of that appointment just very um, dejected and very upset because I'm like, I, I don't want to have surgery. But also at the same time, I'm like, I got to do something. And uh, what's crazy is that um, I was having a conversation with um, a student. And uh, as a pastor, you know, you, you're encouraging them all kinds of, with all kinds of things. But I remember asking them the question, so are you available for what God has for you? And I believe that that's the main call of Christians is we're supposed to be available for what God has for us. And uh, the student was like, yeah, yeah, I'm available. I'm ready to go. And I said, well, and my response was, I said, so do you have a passport? And they're like, why would I need to have a passport? 
and uh, as I was counseled as a younger person, uh, said, you know, truth is, is that if God were to call you to go overseas for missions today, you can't go. That's not being available. That's being pretentious. As saying that it's still under my timing. And so I remember as I said that, God really laid a hold of my heart and said, you're just as pretentious with the things that you say. You say that you're available for me, but your 518 pound self wouldn't fit on an airplane seat if you tried. And I remember just suddenly being cut to the core and saying, you know what, I've got to do this. And at the time, my insurance company would cover zero dollars of it. And I literally was considering cashing out my retirement uh, because I was like, I might not be alive to actually retire if I don't do something. So I began the nine-month process of um, going through the process. Luckily, had an insurance change. They, they covered a good portion of it. But um, remember so many doctor's appointments that said, you're an anomaly, said you should be you should have heart disease, you should have diabetes, you should have hypertension, you should have um, everything. Because you weigh 518 pounds, they're like, you have nothing. And so the odds of this being success are extremely high. Um, so I walked into that, that hospital on June 1st, 2015. Um, my pastor came and prayed at the Circle K right by our houses because I didn't want have to, him have to drive down at 4 a.m. in the morning. To meet me and my mom as I went for surgery uh, so I get there and surgery happens you know I'm grateful for it I remember waking up and from surgery and, and post-op and said please tell me they did the surgery that was my biggest fear was they'd get in there and decide they couldn't do it um, they, yep we did it and said well can I have an ice cube then I'm like sure you can have an ice cube uh, but the following was hard everything that followed was hard um, Recovery was, luckily it was smooth, I had no complications, but at the same time, it was hard. Um, I, I, I mean, the, the diet following was, was difficult to stick with, but also even life just adjusting was a challenge. But truth is, is that what I've come to say, and I believe is true, is that you do not get what you wish for. You get what you work for. And I think scripture backs that up. Um, when I look at the Bible and I, and I use that to determine my life, you know, I'm a, a follower of Jesus and the Bible is our, our instruction book for life. And I see stories in there constantly that talk about how people could have wished for change, but truly when they started to work for it, God did something when they invested in. And so interesting thing is, is that so second Samuel chapter 24, David, who is one of the one of the heroes of the faith, um, known to be a man after God's own heart, was looking for a place to put the, the temple. God had told him to go f to this place. Um, this gentleman is out in his field, and David, the king of all of the world at the time, walks up to one of these people and says, I require your threshing floor. And this guy looked at him and goes, it's yours. Take it. You deserve It's yours. You, you have the right to. What's interesting is that David's response was this, um, in 2 Samuel 24, 24, he said, um, I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord, which had cost me nothing. So here's my question. What do you expect to get from something that cost you nothing? You know, people talk about you get what you pay for, you buy a lemon of a car for nothing, um, whatever. But in scripture, it tells us that for... This, this man of God was like, I am not going to offer something to the Lord that costs me nothing. And truth is, is that we offer way too much to the Lord for nothing. And uh, my question for, for you is, what are you willing to do to change? Not, and obviously, I'm talking about my weight loss journey. I'm 300 pounds down now. Two years out, went back to my two-year appointment, met with Dr. Kalakian, and he looks at me and goes, well, you've made me a liar. And I was like, gladly so, sir. Um, I've only had one surgery. I'm not having another one. Uh, 300 pounds lost on the gastric sleeve is apparently unheard of. The truth is, is that I worked out five days a week. I, I busted my tail because I was like, I'm not going back. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take this temple. Romans chapter 12 verse one says, "Present yourselves as a living sacrifice to God." And I was like, I want to be a living sacrifice. I want to do these things. And um, the interesting thing is, is that. Uh, with all that being said, you know, 
I've gotten to experience some great things since, you know, November of 2017, uh, oh, 16, sorry, 2016. Um, I married my beautiful wife, uh, got to experience that. And that was, uh, I've been single for 36 years, 35 years and 35 years, 11 months and some days, uh, before we got married. But, uh, the crazy thing is, is that God is faithful. Uh, I've worked hard to lose 300 pounds. I've worked hard. And um, I don't have to wish for it anymore. And that's what I encourage you with. Wherever you are, whatever you're struggling with, whether it's weight loss, whether it's a new job, whether it's um, just life, truth is, is that nothing comes easy. Um, God does not guarantee our, our health, wealth, anything like that. He guarantees that he will be with us through the journey. Um, and I think that's a misconception that many people have. Jesus is not my my eye in the sky that I, I get everything I want from. Like I can just walk up to a drive through and give my order. Um, he has a plan. Um, and that plan consisted of me working my tail off, uh, trying to get healthy. So hopefully you find yourself in a place maybe where you can find some encouragement from this that if you have something, an obstacle you need to overcome, you need to work for it. Quit wishing that it changes. Start working for it. Um, and in all that, I hope you understand that, that God is intricately interested in our lives. So as you go about your day, wherever you are, know that you have a God that is interested in your life. He's not just some uh, being that spun the world into motion to nothing. We weren't just happenstance. We have a God that loves us. And he created the world perfectly in the beginning. We messed it up. I mean, we're, we're, we're sinful people. And the truth is, is that the Bible's full of those stories. Even David was a prime example of that. He got it right sometimes, but not always. Fast forward a little bit, and Jesus comes. God sends his only son. Again, back to that idea of you get what you work for, not what you wish for. Jesus was willing to come from heaven to earth so that you might be able to know him. That's, that's work, folks. And uh, he lived a perfect life. And he died on a cross for me. He, he gave up his life for my sins. And in the end, he rose again on the third day. He's not dead. I uh, rose again, and he speaks on my behalf to the Heavenly Father, meaning that I can have life. And he gave me life so that I could live it to the full. And I feel like I'm able to do that because I've gained an understanding of the fact that God does not want me just to wish. He wants me to work. He wants me to get to it. So hopefully you can get to it. Um, God is good, and he's been faithful in this process for me. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below the video. If I can encourage you in new ways, let me know. But again, you get what you work for, not what you wish for. Stop wishing for change but start acting and being active in seeing it change. Um, have a great day. Have a blessed day. I love you, and hopefully you will understand that God does too. Bye.